Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor, and today I'm going to give a... do something different. I'm going to have kind of a game not review, but thoughts, opinions, that kind of thing on a game, which I've never done before, but I'm going to do, <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you might have guessed it, but the game I want to talk about is Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, before we go into this, um, this will have a mild spoiler, um, nothing plot related. I'm not really going to get into, um, exp you know, the, the storyline. I'm not going to give away any, any big major plot points here. Um, just maybe some mild spoilerage, but nothing that will give away the storyline at all. Um, first of all, um, I have not played the game, so that's going to be quite unique here. Uh, that's right, I don't have a PS4 or a PS4 Pro. I don't even have an Xbox. Uh, I'm a PC gamer through and through. Play PC games. Um, uh, that's, that's what I've always been, that's what I do. And, uh, not a console player. However, I keep up with all the console games. I'm up to date on them. I pay attention to what's out there in console land so uh, I'm kind of familiar with all those things but the reason why I want to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn is well it's a, an absolutely fantastic game and so how do I know about it um, I have watched and I'm not ashamed to admit this because I do this a lot I have watched um, three full playthroughs of this game from three different people and um, I will give them a shout out because I do believe their playthroughs are some of the best out there on YouTube right now for this game and if you wanted to watch a playthrough on it I would recommend these three people and you'll get all aspects of the game each one does it a little differently but with all three combined you'll get an absolute full scope of this game um, but before I uh, shout them out and uh, talk about who I watched this gameplay of, let me just say that what I saw was so incredible that this game is making me consider getting a PS4. Um, this, is, this, this is the kind of game that would make me get a PS4. It would make me buy, I would probably get the PS4 Pro. It would make me want to get one this is the game that would do that it is leaning me in that in that area um and i would definitely get this game and this would be the first game i play <laughs> i am definitely leaning toward that um so let me just say that's a really really strong thing because i don't have a console i don't do console gaming i only do pc gaming but this is making me want to get the console because it's not out on PC. You can't play it on PC, so PS4 is it. Um, so that all said, let's get straight to why this game is pretty darn awesome, the storyline. Um, if you play games not for the storyline, then I guess you it would still be fun, but the storyline really makes this game. It has one of the best storylines in a game to date and I like games with an in-depth storyline uh, for example some of the games with a deep storyline that I have played and that I like is the Bioshock series the storyline I mean yeah play all the Bioshocks you will be just totally enthralled the storyline it is so deep um, the Deus Ex series all of them even Mankind Divided play all of those and the storyline is just it's deep it's good right so I like storylines in a game Horizon Zero Dawn my gosh it's one of the best first of all it's an intriguing storyline there's intrigue and interest and mystery from the very beginning of the game and things get answered along the way and it is just, uh, it is mind blowing. I don't want to give away spoilers in case somebody has not played it and you want to play it and you don't want to be spoiled. So I'm not going to tell you what the storyline culminates, but if you've seen the trailer for the game, 
you know this is not so much a spoiler because this is in the trailer and this is in the stuff you've probably seen, even the screenshots and, or whatever. You're in a post-apocalyptic world, uh, or a post-post-apocalyptic world, really, because you're after the apocalypse and things have kind of recovered. And the you, you've got humans on the Earth, and then you also have robots. So you're fighting robots. Um, that is really not a spoiler. Everybody kind of, you know, you, you kind of know that going into this game. But the questions that will be answered are, how did those robots get there? Why are those robots there? Why do the primitive people of Earth who are in the future not remember the previous civilization of Earth, the, um, the metal ones, the metal people, the people of the metal world, why do they not remember them? Why don't they know technology? If there's robots on the world, why are they all primitive? Why are they fighting with bows and arrows? And then what happened to the metal ones? What happened? What caused the apocalypse to happen? And then how are we all still alive after the apocalypse? These are questions that are answered in the game and it gets so in depth and it does leave some questions unanswered. So if there's a Horizon Zero Dawn 2, then that would make sense because there are still questions left. This is the kind of game I would definitely want a DLC for and definitely a sequel for. Definitely would want more to this game. So what kind of combat is this game? Well, this game is a lot like Far Cry Primal. If you've ever played Far Cry Primal, um, you do a lot of scavenging, you do a lot of uh, foresting and crafting in that game. This is very similar to that. It's also similar to Far Cry in the sense that there are towers you have to climb up and once you enable them, the fog of war goes away and the land is revealed. So there's some of those aspects that you may be familiar with with other games. There's some other game aspects in there and mechanics as well. So there's not, these aren't new game mechanics you've never seen before. This is tried and true stuff, but it's how it's all put together that makes the game exciting. It really is. So don't worry so much about the fact that there's a lot of familiar or similar game mechanics. Keep, think about that, the fact that how it's all put together is what makes it unique and interesting and different. And it does. This game is also full of side quests, a um, ton of side quests, uh, more than you would ever think possible in a game. Uh, it has a ton of side quests. Um, this is an open world game. This is, I believe, the, the developer's first open world game that they have. And they pulled it off really well. So you can literally... In this game, you can jump wherever you want. You don't have to follow the main storyline. You could just go out into the world and explore and forage and uh, do anything you want without even doing the main storyline. Now, you'll probably jump the gun on several things if you do that because there is a storyline progression and you'll meet people you're not supposed to meet first, but you could technically meet them. And believe it or not, the dialogue and the mechanics in the game are written so that if that happens it knows what you've done so like if you get to a certain point in the game but you go back and find that there was a side quest early on in the game you missed that side quest character will know at what progression point you are in the main storyline and make comments about that that's smart programming guys really smart programming. this game is smartly programmed it knows it keeps track of where you are in the game progression and that changes your interaction with the characters in the game that you're going to talk to and make decisions with. So that's how smartly this game is programmed and that makes it interesting because you can it can be played so many different ways. You know, anybody can play it. There's not just one way to play the game. You can do it in any order and play it in several different ways. So that gives a lot of flexibility and variability to the game. Um, but what I was saying about the side quest is 
you could, if you wanted to, skip all the side quests and just do the main storyline. You'd probably finish the game very quickly if you just did the main storyline and no side quests. Um, however, you would be missing a huge chunk of the game if you did not do the side quests. So it would behoove you to do the side quest because a large portion of the game is a side quest and they also give you the XP you need, the experience points, to level up your character. The max level in the game is 50, by the way. So that gives you the experience points to keep leveling up and also gives you the resources, the metal shards and other resources you need to purchase better items like bows and ammunition and armor. And through that, you'll do better in combat. And you'll want those things because as you get closer to the end of the game, the robot's difficulty gets higher and higher. You get bigger and badder robots and they're harder to fight. So you want that good gear as you get closer to the, to the end game. I would not want to be a low level character playing the last half of the game <laughs> uh, past um, Meridian. People that have played the game would know that. I would not want to go past Meridian out into that area and start playing that section of the game without having good stuff. <laughs> and there is good stuff in the game. There's uncommon gear, which is green, rare gear, which is blue, and very rare gear, which is purple. And then they have uh, higher, higher end stuff like shadow Karja stuff, which is good. But there is actually stuff even better than the shadow stuff. And that is if you do the hunting lodges. And you go through that, that quest and you do all those and you go to the hunting lodge in Meridian. You can get what would be considered maybe epic gear. It's called lodge gear. Um, but it's better than the shadow stuff. So there is a tier above the shadow stuff. You just have to you know do those extra hunting lodges the stuff to get it which is completely optional you don't have to do it but it's there as an option and that gives you again more experience points and resources and so forth so this game can be played in a lot of ways you've got the main quest you got the side quest you have errands in the game that you run uh and uh, you also have tutorials you can do when you get a new weapon for example there's a tutorial you can use on that that can also get you experience points and other stuff like that so the, all of that's optional, but it's all there if you really, really want to, you know, gr you know, do the game. I almost said grind the game, but it's really not that big of a grind. Uh, the, one of the playthroughs I saw, the person did all that stuff. He did all the lodges, all the side quests, the hunting lodges, all the side quests, and the tutorials. And um, it didn't seem like that much of a grind, to be honest. It was, and it, and it helped him in the end because when he got to the end boss, the end stuff. Um, it was a lot better for him because he had the best equipment. He had the lodge equipment, and then he had one of the, he had the armor, the armor as well from the armory, the uh, special futuristic armor. So um, it really helps to do all those things, and I would recommend that if you're going to play this game, do all those things. It'll really help. It'll make the game feel more complete if you do that. If you if you just rush the game, then you're not going to get the most out of it. So just kind of know that going in. But all that stuff ties together. And one of the key points of the game is the character interaction. Um, you care for the characters in this game. This is a kind of game where you actually care about the character. You care for the two main characters you're first introduced to. Yourself. You play as Aloy. You're, you care about her. She's a very strong character in this game. Really really strong you care about her and what's going on and you care about the person rost who is watching over her from the beginning you care about him and then as you're introduced to the other characters in the game you care for them even the side quests you go through the side quest missions and there are people that you will meet in there that will come back around at the end of the game that you'll get to talk to again and you care what happened to them. And there's people you're introduced to at the beginning of the game that are connected to other people that you meet later in the game and it ends up fulfilling their storyline from the beginning and it all fits together and it's so beautiful. Uh, it's really worth playing those side quests 
and the side quest have characters you care about. It's one thing just playing a side quest, but it's another thing playing a side quest where you are actually enthralled by the character and you care about the character and what's happening to them and you want their story resolved. That's a different, whole different thing and this game has that. It has character interaction and reaction like nothing else. So that's awesome. Um, so the storyline is great. Side quests are great. Character interaction is great. Combat. Combat is what it is. I mean, you're going to have to fight something, right? Um, it can be good or bad, depending on how you play. If you don't do a lot and you just rush through the main storyline, well, then you're going to not do very well. <laughs> you're going to die a lot. But if you take your time, if you do like the tutorials and learn how to use the different ammunition, that's very important. A lot of I've noticed a lot of people who play the game tend to not use a lot of ammunition who do terrible at the game. They tr they don't use all the ammunition available to them. And this game has several different has several different types of ammunition for each type of thing. Like a bow will have a regular arrow. You'll have like a um, a precision arrow, which is I guess like sniping, like a sniping kind of arrow. And then you'll have like fire arrows. The sling will have like ice and fire ammunition so if you use all the types they they do different things against the robots because robots are vulnerable to different things and you're going to have a better time if you just stick to one weapon type and one weapon you're not going to do very well so it behooves you to learn those weapon types and ammunition and everything and figure that out and then you'll have a better time with combat. It won't be so hard. And that's where the side quest and the lodge, the, lo the lodges and stuff that you do, the hunting lodges, that stuff really hones in your abilities there. The robots start off easy, but they get a lot harder. There are some hard robots toward the end, big hard robots. And um, you wanna be prepared for that. So you really need to be versatile with your weaponry. Um, and if there's one thing I can recommend about the combat, roll. Roll a lot. And get the fast roll. There's a skill where you can roll even faster or dodge faster. Get that. You're going to need it. You're going to need to roll fast. Rolling out of the way is going to save your life, especially some of those end robots. Um, what else to say? There is a lot of foraging, a lot of having to gather plants to craft things uh, and so forth but the crafting system is so easy in this game it's really just a click and point ordeal when you have all the materials you can just quick craft stuff and it's real simple so they, they actually they balanced it right so there's a certain amount of gathering and a certain amount of time spent crafting and it's very very quick you do have to gather plants to heal yourself with but you can build up a satchel of plants so that you can heal yourself. Potions, don't underestimate potions. Build health potions. That's really going to help you. Build health potions. Um, and um, it's really not that bad because as you go through everything you do, you'll pretty much be stooping down and just, you know, gathering whatever, wherever you are. The robots will have loot. The ground will have loot. Just go about and loot everything, all that you can. And I think one of the first things you should upgrade is your satchel space. Upgrade your resource satchel spaces so that you can have more resources. That's going to fill up real fast. And also get the, the, the uh, skill where you can get more resources. Again, that'll make it fill up real fast. But it's worth it. Those resources are what's going to really help you build a good character. Um, the, so the foraging, I, I, when I was watching, it did not seem to be that bad. If I were playing the game, I don't think it would bother me that much because I'm not the kind of person who likes to sit there and, you know, um, do a whole lot of foraging to craft stuff. I'm not a huge crafter. Um, so I don't typically do a lot of that kind of stuff, but in this game, it didn't seem to be too annoying. I don't think I would have a huge problem with it. So that's cool. Uh, one other thing, the, um, the technology in this game is really cool. Aloy, 
um, without giving away major spoilers, is going to have something that's really going to aid her in her combat and other things. And um, it is really, it's a really cool way to do it. I've never seen it done like that before, and I like it. I want more of that. That'll be that's cool anyway. I like that whole scene where she um, went through all that. It was just a whole lot of fun. People that have played the game know what I'm talking about. Um, it, was, it was really cool. Really cool the way... It's what makes her unique. Let's just say. It makes her unique. What else? Um, there are other things besides just the storyline, side quest, errands, and tutorials as well. There's also the um, data point collections, I guess you could call them. There are so many different ways to get information on the previous metal world in this game. And that is through data points. Basically pads, um, what you would think of would be like a, a, a tablet or something like that from the future. And you find these out in the world. There are a lot of them scattered just throughout the world. And they're random, so I mean you're not—they're not marked on your map, so you don't know where to find them. So what you do, what you have to do, is literally every time you're in a ruins of a city or something, is just scan and look around everywhere uh, for these data items, and you can miss them. But when you find them, they really fill in a lot of background about the world and the history. And there's a lot of them. When you look in your menu, you'll see there's a whole lot you need to find. So if you really want to get the whole story of the game search for these data points make it a point to do that explore and search for those data points the next thing to do is to search for the vantage points i noticed a lot of people overlooked the vantage points they thought that that was maybe just a, a a scenic view or something like that no the vantage points are more than that they have a story to them they, they have a story line and you actually physically have to scan the vantage point and then go into your inventory and go to that vantage point icon, click on it, and there's a whole text there, a whole email, a whole thing to read. And it's long, and each one has one. And if you read them all, it gives a storyline that's very, very enthralling. And a lot of people have overlooked that. They didn't understand that they thought that the audio playing when you looked at a vantage point was it. That's all that was to it. But that's not. You actually have to go click on the vantage point icon in the inventory menu. And then you will see that there is text. More text along with that. And it's a good story. And so you want to go make a point to seek out the vantage points. You'll really enjoy that. The next thing is, of course... Um, any text log, you know, audio log, text log, like we were talking about, pick all those up and you'll get them in the main mission. You'll get them in side quests and you'll get them in the open world. Go find all those things and read them all. The more you read, the, the cooler it is. The other thing is metal flowers. Pick them all up uh, along with the Banuke figures and you can go get some special items in Meridian. That's another thing you can go do separate of everything else. So you can see there's a lot of things adding up here to do beyond the main storyline. And that's what keeps the game full and interesting. I really like, you know, watching all of that and um, makes me want to play it now. Um, the other thing is just how cool the game actually is. I mean, it's just a, it's just a fun game. It's just absolutely fun. Um... There was something I wanted to mention. I'm trying to recall what it is. Um, but yeah, this is this game is right up there. Like I said, this is one of those games that makes me want to get a PS4 just so I can play the game. <laughs> I really wish it'd come to PC. Because with the type of gameplay that this game is, it would do well on the PC. Mouse and keyboard get kind of game. This would do really well on the PC. Um, it would play really well is what I mean. The mechanics of it were, would work extremely well on the PC. Uh, they could even give some more upgrade options because it has the ability to upgrade your armor and your bows and your weapons and stuff. You can upgrade stuff with modules. And so it would be really cool. On the PC they could even expand the upgrade system a little bit more. And it would be really cool to do some upgrades on stuff and uh, change the appearance of things a little bit more or something like that. 
could be really interesting. I wish they would bring it to the PC. I would love to play it on the PC. Um, another thing is just how great the game looks. You will absolutely be thrown back at the visuals of this game, and it does look better on a PS4 Pro than a PS4. Apparently, with a PS4 Pro, they're able to use some higher game specs. They have better looking textures, uh, more geometry, uh, so they're able to do some things better with the PS4 Pro in this game than they are the PS4. So there is a visual difference between PS4 Pro and PS4 in this game. So on a PS4 Pro, this game is best looking game of the year so far. I mean, just an best looking game I've ever seen, actually. This game is phenomenal. Um, it really is. And that's why I wish it could come to the PC, because knowing the graphics GPU power on the PC and what we could do running this thing at higher resolutions and everything, it would be incredible on the PC. But as it is on the PlayStation, I mean, it is just, I mean, the graphics in it are stunning. This game is a stunning game. Uh, one of the other things I just remembered what it was I wanted to mention, um, because it's an open world game, um, there are quests that you can find in cities and they have a little green quote, uh, explanation point on them. But if you miss those, there are quests in the open world that are just found, like found quests. And they only happen if you find that person. So for example, there might be a person laying on the ground and he's hurt, injured, and he needs you to do something. He needs help. That's a quest. But he's not going to have a green exc exclamation mark to find that quest. So that's why you want to explore the world. Because you may come upon a quest that you never expected. A side quest. You know, it, it's just you find a guy, he needs help, and boom, you're in a side quest. So that happens. And there's a lot of those in this world. There's some... There's, there's a lot of them. So don't just stick to the main roads. Don't just stick to the main storyline. You want to go explore. You want to look on your map and see where there's something interesting and like, I'll go down there and check that out. Because along the way, you might find a new side quest you never would have found before. So that's what makes the game so big. Is they've, they've scattered side quests out there for you just to find. I call those found missions. So there's stuff like that in the game and that makes it exciting and makes it, you could play the game once and miss a lot of those, play it again and you'll have a totally different experience because now you found all the side quests. So it, it, it allows more playability in the game if you miss those things at first. Um, like I mentioned, uh, the three playthroughs that I watched some uh, they play everybody plays a game differently right so let's just put that out there there's no right or wrong way to play a game everybody does it differently I like to see thorough playthroughs I myself do thorough playthroughs when I play a game I explore the world the entire world um, I loot everything I check out all dialogue I check out audio log text log video logs all of it so I like thorough playthroughs like that because in that you don't miss out on anything. You get the full experience of the game. Uh, so the there are two that I will start with. Two people that I will recommend watching. Um, the first one would be Jesse Cox. Probably you've heard of him. Very big YouTuber. Does a lot of games. I've um, He has done streams of this game. And he, does, he has them on YouTube. They're like four hour videos each. Uh, he's not finished, not anywhere near the end of the game yet. But his playthroughs are very good. Um, by the way, I'll put a link to each of these playthroughs in the description. His playthrough on this is good. Where he's gotten to in the game is pretty good. Uh, very thorough. He doesn't miss anything. He has, all, he's, he's actually making a point to get all the vantage points. He's making a point to get all the data points in the open world and read all the text logs and read uh, the, uh, listen to the audio logs and all that stuff. So he's doing all that storyline content and all the side quests and the main storyline. He's just not very far in the game yet. 
and maybe he'll get there, you know, eventually. Um, but his playthrough is very good, so I would recommend watching his playthrough because you'll get a very thorough playthrough of the game. And the other person, uh, let me go, let me make sure that I have their name right here or pronounce it right. The other person I will recommend their playthrough of is Galm, G-A-L-M, um, another big YouTuber, has a lot of games. He did a, an, an incredible playthrough of this game. He has finished it from start to finish. He did do every side quest. He made it a point to do every single side quest. So you will get the full uh, storyline and you will get the full side quest line. And he did all the hunting lodges. He did every single one and completed every single one and went to the hunting lodge, became part of it, and got the hunting lodge gear with the final armor from the armory as well. So if you want to see a playthrough of somebody who has gotten everything, that guy had it all. Um, also, he leveled up very quickly in the game and hit level 50 before end game. So he was able to do very well in combat, and that'll show you how well you can do in combat when you're leveled up that high. And he he was very good. I note I noted that he was very good in combat. He he got the combat system down very quickly, and was fighting very well. Very and and he was he was being versatile, like I was talking about, being versatile with your weapons and your ammunition. He was on point. So G-A-L-M, Galm, I recommend watching his playthrough. I'll put that link down below as well. And then the third playthrough I recommend, I've always liked this guy's playthroughs, and I watch him, Christopher Odd. Uh, gonna shout out him too. Um, his playthrough is now finished. He just recently finished the game. And uh, he also did the main, all the main storyline quests, all the side quests. He made it a point to do all the side quests. And um, his playthrough is very good. He brings up a lot of questions throughout the game and all that. And he thinks about the storyline. He thinks about the story as he's playing. Just like Jesse. Him and Jesse think alike in the fact that they're thinking of the storyline when they play the game. Which is really cool. Um, he got some of the data points and some of the vantage points. But he missed a lot of the data points. Uh, like the ones that are just random in the world. Uh, he did not seek them out and explore to find them with a purpose, so he missed like most of them. And he also missed the whole point about the vantage points. He unfortunately did not know that you could go and click on the icon on the vantage point and go read the text log and find all that information there. Uh, he just saw the little audio that it played with it, and he got a few of them, but not all of them. So he missed some of that stuff. But still, his playthrough is solid, so you should go watch that. If you watch all three of those playthroughs, you will get a full experience of this game, and it'll probably make you want to go buy it and play it. It sure made me want to. So, um, this has been a unique video. Very tired now, as you can tell. But this has been a very unique video. I, don't, I haven't done any of these kind of videos before, and I'm thinking about doing more of these. Need a better camera, of course, and uh, lighting and all that jazz. And uh, maybe get my thoughts together a little bit better, shorten these things so they're not too long. I, I get all that. You know, I'll, I'll, that'll come in time. But for now, um, something new I'm trying. Y'all can drop a line and let me know what you think in the comments. If uh, this kind of stuff is good or bad, what you think. And um, if you want more of these kinds of things. And uh, also, if you've played the game here and want to drop a comment and let me know what you thought of it, or if you're now thinking about getting it, what do you think? Um, that's what I got. Um, like it if you like it. Don't like it if you don't like it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.